A very good afternoon and welcome to Lunchtime News with me, Abra Rabid. Now before we go into our stories in detail, let's take a look at our headlines. Six fishermen who were illegally staying at Reunion Island had turned over to the CID. Over 100,000 people affected by the adverse weather in North rainfall to reduce from today. New Zealand sets a target of 660 runs for Sri Lanka at the second test. Now in our lead story, the Disaster Management Centre says more than 10,000 people have been affected to the rainy condition experienced in the northern province. The assistant director of the DMC, Pradip Kodipli, said more than 100,000 people have been affected due to the inclement weather conditions. Now, DMC Assistant Director Pradeep Kuripli further noted the relief teams are working tireless to provide relief services to the affected people with the assistance of the Tri Forces. Meanwhile, the Med Department notes the rainy conditions will see a reduction from today onwards. However, the department noted showers or thunder showers may occur at a few places in Ratnapura, Gaul, and Mathura districts after 2 pm. Misty conditions can be expected at some places in the central, Sabaragamua and western provinces during the morning. There may be temporary localized strong winds during thunder showers. General public is kindly requested to take adequate precautions to minimize damages caused by lightning activity. Now, in some more local news, the annual conference of the district secretaries was held in Colombo yesterday. Ministers, officials of the Defence Forces, district secretaries and others participated in the conference. The disaster situation due to the floods in the northern province was a focus area of the conference. The ministers informed that the 1902 hotline has been allocated to receive information about the flood situation in the north. More than 75,000 people have been affected due to the floods. 11,000 people are staying in camps. Once the water level reduces, we will have to check and ascertain the damages. Currently, the district secretaries and the officials of the Disaster Management Centre are provided with the required facilities for the people. Also, it's important to keep an eye on the health conditions due to the floods. Minister of Health brought the medical superintendents and we discussed this. Currently, health clinics are being conducted at the camps. The people who are living in these areas are the ones who resettled after the war. This is the second time their lives were affected. Roads have damaged. Mainly the inner roads have damaged compared to the main roads. So we will have to ascertain everything and produce a report. So we are requesting all the GAs to take as many as goods to help those affected people. <laughs> Now in local news, Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe and several other ministers worshipped Temple of the Sacred Tooth Relic in Kandy today. This is the first time Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe arrived at the Temple of the Sacred Tooth Relic after being reappointed as the Prime Minister. Several ministers also accompanied the Prime Minister while several UNP supporters gathered in Kandy. The Prime Minister also invoked blessings from the Mahanayaka of the Asgiri chapter of the Siam sect, the most venerable Varakakoda Sri Yana Thero. Thereafter, the Prime Minister and the ministers worshipped the sacred tooth relic. The Prime Minister also called on the Mahanayaka of the Malwata chapter of the Siam sect, the most venerable Tibetuave Sri Sumangala Thero. Now, a seminar of the Frontline Socialist Party was held in Colombo yesterday. Democracy was the topic of discussion for Rani Vikramasinghe and the political groups in the past few days. Be it the Rani Vikramasinghe camp, the TNA or the SLMC, the democracy of the main political parties are connected to the power struggle. The people who were in the upper balcony ended everything after their power was established. They did not bring democracy to the people they are after. Then we understand that the time which follows is the time where the democracy is being corrupted. That is why we are not going to continue our fight for democracy with these people who are with power. The Provincial Council Amendment Act was passed unconstitutionally. No one spoke about the constitution at that time. They all raised their hands. According to the constitution, without the act being passed in all provincial council, it cannot be passed in parliament. It was defeated at provincial councils. 
the judiciary said that this cannot be approved without a referendum. But at the working committee stage, they added amendments and it was made into a document with over 40 sheets of paper and they changed the election system. The people who speak most of democracy, the TNA and the JVP raised their hands for this. When this is the situation, how can the people get involved? That is why we say that the people should have the power to review this. Give the power to the people to review what has been approved by the union. Now several new ministers assumed duties today. Edward Gunasekara assumed duties as the Deputy Minister of the Lands and Parliamentary Affairs at the Ministry in Batra Mulla. Sajiva Sena Singha assumed duties at the Minister of Ministry of Science, Technology and Research at Mis Ministry of Science and Research in Batra Mulla. Minister of Agriculture, Rural Economic Affairs, Livestock Development, Irrigation and Fisheries and Aquatic Resources Development. Now in some more local news, a body was discovered at a house in Savatsisi Anradhapura. The victim was identified as Prasad Samira, age 31. Our correspondent said a resident of Ratnapura, Prasad Samaravira, was working at the Natchiadua District Secretariat and was boarded at the house. His remains were discovered near his bed by residents of the house. The cause of the death is yet to be ascertained. Anuradhapura police are conducting further investigations into the incident. Now, the six fishermen who were illegally residing in the French Reunion Island have been handed over to the CID. The Assistant Director, Search Operation Unit of the CID, Padma Priya Tissera, said that the fishermen were brought back to the country through intervention of the government on the 26th of this month. The fishermen had travelled to the Reunion Island, signed a multified fishing trawler last month. They are residents of Chilau. The CID has begun extensive investigations into the incident. Now, parliamentarian Ranjit Zoisa and several others who were arrested and remanded over the assault on a man in Godakavela were granted bail today. And that is all the news for this hour. Join us again at 1.55pm for the very latest. For the News First Team, I'm Abrar Abed. A very good afternoon and take care.